Good Mr. Chair, Council members and participants, we are now live. Good morning, everyone. This is the public hearing of the Committee on Global Opportunities and the Creative Innovative Economy regarding resolution number 200175. Uh, I apologize for the very late start. We had technical issues. Our 10 o'clock hearing is going off uh, at 11 o'clock, but I appreciate your patience. Um, and uh, before we begin, I'd like to recognize our clerk, Liz Sweeney, who will read the required announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I understand that state law currently requires that the following announcement be made at the beginning of every remote public hearing as follows. Due to the current public health emergency, city council committees are currently meeting remotely. We are using Microsoft Teams to make these remote hearings possible. Instructions for how the public may view and offer public testimony at public hearings of council committees are included in the public hearing notices that are published in the Daily News, the Inquirer, and Legal Intens Intelligencer prior to the hearings and can also be found on phlcouncil.com. Everyone who has been, been invited to the meeting to testify should be aware that this public hearing is being recorded. Because the hearing is public, participants and viewers have no reasonable expectation of privacy. By continuing to be in the meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. Additionally, prior to Councilman O recognizing members for questions or comments they have for witnesses, I will note for the record at this time that we will use the chat feature available in Microsoft Teams to allow members to signify that they wish to be recognized. Um, in order to comply with the Sunshine Act, the chat feature must only be used for this purpose. Thank you. Thank you, Clerk. Will you please call the roll to take attendance? Yes, Chairperson O. Present. Vice Chairperson Bass. Present. Council Member Squilla. Council Member Gilmore Richardson. Council Member Thomas. Council Member Lozada. Council Member Herity. Here. Council Member Driscoll. Present. Okay. Let us reach out to Council Member Squilla. I know he's been waiting on the call. Sure. Clerk, do I have a quorum? Yes, we have a quorum. Okay, thank you. A quorum of the committees are present. Uh, a quorum of the committee is present and the hearing is now called to order. Clerk, will you please read the title of the resolution being considered today? Resolution number 200175, authorizing Council's Committee on Global Opportunities and the Creative Innovative Economy to hold hearings regarding the Music Industry Task Force report and recommendations. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we have been delayed. Unfortunately, we have lost one of our witnesses, so I would like to proceed forward. Um, to start, we're going to view a short video from various music industry leaders, and then we'll begin uh, by recognizing our chair. Uh, would you please play the video? We do not have audio on that video. Yeah, me either. Elizabeth, there should be an option to share computer audio somewhere if you have presenter rights. Um, when you share your screen, it should be a toggle button, I believe, if you're in Windows. If not, I can try and play it from my, my end. Okay. 
Um, give me one moment, please. While we are uh, um, waiting for the video um, uh, to be worked out, let me just start with my opening statement. And that is that this uh, process has been a long time in coming. Um, this uh, music industry task force was created uh, August 12, 2017. The recommendations were made by our um, task force members. I'd like to just uh, recognize them at this point in time. They are the Chairman David Ivory, Dr. Louis Anthony DeLise, Jeff Duperon, who has uh, passed away, and we dedicated this report to him. Um, Carvin Hagens, Kelly Lee, Jesse Lundy, Eric Chill Moody, Justin Nordell, Miriam Suzette Ortiz, Bernard Resnick, Carol Riddick, Eric Sabo, and Stephanie Sepo. I thank you for your work. Um, we were, this report was completed with recommendations in 2019 and our hearing set for March 2020. Unfortunately, we were hit with the COVID-19 pandemic, and that plus other things delayed the hearing. The resolution was reintroduced, and so we have our hearing finally today. Um, the music industry uh, is critical to the economic um, revitalization of our city. Um, the creative arts economy is critical to the future growth of this city. It is important that everyone in government and in our city recognize uh, the importance of this economic engine and what it means to our city, to the individuals here, uh, that this city become a destination point, that this city become a platform for the creative arts uh, folks. That requires an investment from government. Uh, it requires funding. It requires many things. This committee has put together in the most practical way a, a list of recommendations they felt would have an immediate uh, effect. There are other things that, that can be recommended, but this was uh, the recommendations, and we're going to go through that today. Um, with that, Liz, do we have someone to present this test uh, video? We're still working on the audio for the video. Okay, so at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead with our hearing. Um, and with that, I'm going to ask uh, that we hear from our, um, our uh, first panel, which is going to be... Council Member, uh, Council Member, just before you get started, I want to recognize as being present, Council Member Squillen. Thank you very much, Council Member. Uh, it's noted for record you are uh, present. So, um, uh, Clerk, will you call the first panel? Yes, the, for the first panel is David Ivory. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Uh, good morning, and thank you for giving me a voice regarding this creative economy. And I'd like to thank Council Minot for leading the charge for this hearing and helping the arts and creative economy have a voice. And thank you, members of City Council, for being here at this very important meeting. My name is David Ivory, and I am the chair of the Music Industry Task Force. I'm a Grammy-nominated and multi-platinum music engineer, a producer, former president, and national trustee for the Recording Academy, otherwise known as the Grammys. And I am currently the director of the Sound Recording and Music Technology Program at Montgomery County Community College. Uh, I shared a bit of my background to you to demonstrate my experience and how I dedicated my life to the Philadelphia music industry and the music scene itself. I know the councilman talked a little bit about how this started. The Music Industry Task Force started in 2017 to look at the economic impact of the music industry and to articulate ways that the city can help support the music industry of Philadelphia, which is what it's so famous for. The Music Industry Task Force looked at other music cities, such as New York, Nashville, and Seattle, were doing to enhance what they were doing to enhance their mu musical heritage and economy. We also held networking events with emerging artists, professional musicians, and music makers to get a sense of the challenges were from the ground. Understanding that 
resources are limited. The task force surveyed the broader music community to confirm with other music professionals our 10 recommendations. Of course, everyone we talked to or communicated with strongly agreed with the task force recommendation. The task force strongly believes that these 10 recommendations will reduce barriers for musical artists and the industry, recognize, honor, and promote awareness of the achievements of the activities of Philadelphia's music community, both past and present, and create more opportunities for musicians that will positively impact Philadelphia's economy. All this was studied, discussed, and researched, and was to culminate with a hearing on March 12, 2020. And as the councilman described, not only did the city close down, but the entire country shut down. And we were joking t earlier today that since this was an hour delay on this meeting, what's another hour after two years, right? So the task force developed 10 recommendations over the course and, and was encapsulated in the music industry task force and report and recommendations released in August 2019. Following me will be expert testimony about these recommendations in detail, but first I'm just going to read them out. Here's the list of recommendations. Establish a centralized, permanent Philadelphia Music Office or Commission to continue the work initiated by the Music Industry Task Force. Two, market the strengths of Philadelphia's rich musical history and the current boom of music venues and artists. Three, Promote Philadelphia music in the city's transportation hubs, such as Philly International Airport and 30th Street Station. Four, redevelopment of the Sigma Sound Building as a cultural center. Five, develop an awareness campaign for the fair compensation of working musicians. Six, establish performing arts priority loading and unloading zones, temporary parking areas at certain concert performances venues that will allow artists to quickly load in and out of venues without receiving parking tickets. Um, I, seven, identify courses, sources of funding for sustained, dedicated efforts to grow Philadelphia's music economy. Eight, create hubs for music and concert promotion material distribution. Nine, encourage music performance venues to cater to all ages. And 10, utilize the city zoning and community development policies to benefit the music industry directly. In addition, though it was not part of our recommendations, the task force thinks it's important to conduct an economic impact study of the music industry specifically. A study would identify identify a baseline of the current economic impact of Philadelphia's music industry and provide descriptions of the occupations within the music industries. Unfortunately, previous economic studies incorporated the music industry but was embedded along with hospitality, tourism, and the like. The music industry needs its own study to better understand how it contributes to the Philadelphia economy. In conclusion, I hope this committee will continue to work to support Philadelphia's music sector and provide the resources needed to create a permanent Philadelphia music office. Your support to take these steps are vital to preserving Philadelphia's heritage as a music force in the country and around the world. I just wanted to show a quick, quick slide. I don't know, Elizabeth, can you show that slide? Uh, this is what happens when you Google uh, the best place, the best music cities in the country. And let's see if we can see this slide. If you see this slide, best music cities in the country, we don't even show up on this slide. Like Orlando, Richmond, Virginia. I mean, it's, it's, it's very unfortunate. So I just wanted to present that to you as something that I could show. So, and with that, uh, I thank you for your time and consideration, and I yield back. Thank you very much, uh, David Ivory. At this time, I'll ask if any of the committee members have a question for David Ivory. If not, we'll proceed. Uh, let me ask um, whether Theo or Liz can try again with presenting the uh, video. Sure, I'm, I'm happy to give it a try. Let's see if the audio works this time. Thank you. Are you guys able to see my yes. screen? Right. Hello, I'm Don Thompson Morelli, also known as Don T, recording artist, singer songwriter, independent label owner, and president of the Philadelphia chapter of the Recording Academy. I have a 
story, musical lineage, and represent generations of Philadelphia music creators. I am sister to Amir Questlove Thompson of The Roots. I am daughter of the late legendary singer, Lee Andrews, both Philadelphia Walk of Fame inductees. As a Philadelphia musician, born and raised in West Philadelphia, uh, the music economy, seeing it thrive is something very near and dear to my heart. It is for that reason I'm asking City Council to seriously consider uh, the Music Industry Task Force's recommendations to help grow our music community and creative economy. Hey, my name is Cosmo Baker and I'm a Philadelphia-based DJ and producer. And today I'm asking City Council to seriously consider the Music Industry Task Force's recommendations to help grow our music community and creative economy. Furthermore, I also fully support the redevelopment of Sigma Sound Studios as the new location for the Philadelphia Music Office. Philly, we could do this. Hey, I'm Alex Lewis, a co-founder of Road Home Productions, uh, a radio and podcast company here in Philadelphia. I'm the producer of many radio documentaries, including the Edward R. Murrow winning Going Black, The Legacy of Philly Soul Radio, which was hosted by Philly legend Kenny Gamble and the Gospel Roots of Rock and Soul, a Peabody nominated production with WXPN and NPR Music. I support the Music Industry Task Force recommendations to continue growing and improving Philadelphia's music economy. Hello, my name is Lady Alma, and I'm a singer-songwriter here in Philadelphia. I'm asking the City Council to seriously consider the Music Industry Task Force recommendation to help grow our music community and creative economy. Furthermore, I fully support the redevelopment of Sigma Sound Studio as the new location for the Philadelphia Music Office. Come on, Philly. Let's get it done. My name is Charlie Hall uh, from the War on Drugs. I'm a musician based here in Philadelphia, and I'm asking City Council to uh, seriously consider the, the Music Industry Task Force's recommendations for the redevelopment of Sigma Sound Studios. Uh, this is one of our most important uh, temples of sound uh, here in, in Philadelphia, and it tells a story that I think will be important for people across generations and and um and backgrounds and and this is uh something that i'm, I'm really excited to um see through thank you so much hi there my name is sean Cephas. i'm the owner of forever changes music and gifts in phoenixville pennsylvania my father james Cephas, was the owner of king james records a prominent record store in philadelphia from 1967 till 1997. i'm here to ask the city council to seriously consider the music, music industry task force's recommendations and express my support for the redevelopment of Sigma Sound Studios. Hey, it's Rob and Eric from the Hooters. Sending love and thoughts for Sigma Sound. We grew up around Sigma. Sigma is the soul of Philadelphia music and we need it. It's the sound of Philadelphia. We spent many hours there and uh, it's a beautiful place and it should be preserved for the city and for the world. Amen. Go Sigma. Cheers. I'm Kruf Knox. I'm Christine Elise. And uh, we are touring artists based out of Philadelphia. Um, and today we're asking City Council to seriously consider the, um, the Music Industry Task Force recommendations that will help grow this Philadelphia music community. Um, and one to support is adding loading and unloading zones yes. because as a harpist, <laughs> carrying a harp uh, a few blocks down uh, streets and alleys <laughs> can get very difficult. I know people with drum sets and parking in the middle of the street and blocking traffic and it really would help just to be close to unload, go right in, um, drop everything off, and then kind of move the car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you for your time. We yes. appreciate it. Peace. Thank you so much for your attention to uh, this initiative. It's so important, uh, as it will be transformational for our city.
All right. right. Thank Thank you you very much. much. Okay. Following up on that, I just want to make a quick comment on what David Ivory said. We do need an economic um, impact study. We do have general numbers about uh, arts and culture in Philadelphia, 3.4 billion annual impact, $920 million in household income per year, and $157 million in local taxes to help our city per year. That's pre-COVID. COVID has done a terrible job on our uh, live performances, our tourism. There's other issues that have uh, arisen, and we do need to come back from that. But um, having an economic impact study would be um, critical to really doing uh, a, a, a intelligent uh, job of, um, of, of lifting up the, the, the music industry and really understanding, and it's important for our community, our people, our citizens, to understand why we are putting this effort, this money, these resources into the music economy. Um, the economy, it's going to be so critical. So many people need jobs. So many people uh, need to have the uh, hope of being the person they want to be. This is critical for us. It is difficult to continually try to explain to our, our leaders in Philadelphia why this is so important when other cities, not only here in the United States, but around the world, already understand this. So it is up to this council body. It is up to our our city leaders, our business, our government, everyone else to get behind this. Um, that video is, uh, is uh, just an example of some of the amazing talent in this city, some of the amazing talent that will not be here if we do not go ahead and do this. So with that, I'm going to ask the clerk to call the next panel. The next panel is Lovett Hines, Tommy Joyner, and Theo Aronson. Okay, in that order, um, Lovett Hines, Tommy Joyner, and Theo Aronson, I'll ask you to state your name and provide us with your testimony. Thank you very much. I'm Lovett Hines, Artistic Director of the Philadelphia Clef Club, long-term teacher in Philadelphia, and uh, uh, I'm really requesting support for the phenomenon of what's happening in Philadelphia right now. As uh, artistic director of the Philadelphia Clef Club, the Clef Club is one of three historical institutions in America. Buffalo, Kansas City, and Philadelphia are the mainstays of the Black Musician Unions. And that should be recognized. It's so very, very important to have the historical entities in your city that's going to be attractive. But the most important thing, it has to be informational and people need to know about them, especially our young people. From a teacher, I am just so proud of what's happening in Philadelphia now. Philadelphia musicians are presently on an incredible level of national recognition and, and national and global recognition. I have... Number one, one of my students, and I can say that, but not one of my students, is one of the young people out of Philadelphia, Christian McBride. Number one bassist, number one jazz musician of the year, and number one producer of the year in jazz. Uh, a young man, Emmanuel Wilkins, number one in, in Rising Star, number four in Established Alto Players. These are just a few. Quest Love, of course, we all know what Quest Love is doing. You know, he made this amazing, amazing uh, a documentary about Summer of Soul. And when we have those kind of projects and products coming out of Philadelphia, it's uh, appalling that we are not recognized as a musical city. It's just unbelievable. And if we can get Philadelphia, a city council to feel the same kind of passion that I feel about what's happening in the world today, especially in our in our music industry. People ask me, say, love it. You know that at least one Philadelphia musician is playing in practically every major, major uh, uh, performing group. You know, young people we don't even know about because they know their names. A young man from GAM. Uh, Michael Wooten is playing with the Jonas Brothers, you know, and those kinds of things that are so impactful. But the story about that is the history. 
is the neighborhoods. These young people grew up in this neighborhood. What was the factor to get these young people to the point? Education, of course. Uh, the wonderful things that's happening at Temple University, University of Arts. So we are a major mecca on many, many levels of producing young people and, and presenting these young people to play and make this music around the world and make an impact in the music industry. And that's something that we need to embrace to help grow. There's not a festival in Philadelphia that tells our story. There's a film that says, take me to the river New Orleans, take me to the river Memphis, but it talks about the whole lineage of that progression of music development. We need something like that. So you can see my passion. I will hope we can share that with city council. We hope we can make Philadelphia the musical icon it should be. Thank you very much. Um, next, I'll ask Tommy Joyner to state his name and provide us with his testimony. And I believe these are on recommendations number two. Hi, uh, my name is Tommy Joyner. I'm a, a record producer, an engineer in Philadelphia, and also a club owner. Um, I run a company called Milk Boy, which I started in 1994 in Philadelphia in North Philly. Uh, and it continues today in Center City. Um, I'm in a kind of a unique position in that um, I have a recording studio and I'm a creative, but we, uh, my partner and I also opened up a venue. And so we operate in that space too and see the amount of people who come and see acts. We book acts from all over the world. It's a small venue. It only holds 200 people, but um, that's a very good spot to see bands kind of on their way up. And we will see people regularly come into Philadelphia from outside of Philadelphia and get hotel rooms and stay a weekend or stay several days and spend their money not just at Milk Boy, but also in all the other restaurants and bars in Philadelphia and at a hotel and uh, and really generate income for, for way outside of the space contained in our own bricks. Um, a few years ago, my partner and I also produced a movie. And we had um, the, it's called Slow Learners. It's a romantic comedy. It stars many of the people on Saturday Night Live. And we took it to Tribeca uh uh, film festival and sold it. We got very lucky, I guess, you know, but it was successful. We sold it, um, and, uh, to Sundance films and it is, it, it did a theatrical run and, and it's still, you can still see it today on Amazon. Uh, it was on Netflix for two years, et cetera, but we interfaced quite a bit with the film office during that time. And that was a really informative thing for me to see the amount of money that was available to filmmakers, uh, from not just from Philadelphia, but from outside Philadelphia, who came to Philly to spend their money. At the studio, we interface with this, a lot of the same types of people, except they're in the music business, not the film business. Uh, people who come here, Mark Ronson was in the studio, was a very, uh, well, I won't even bother with his credits, but um, uh, a very famous music producer was in the studio just last week doing string sections, uh, recording them here in Philadelphia. And um, it would be very interesting to think that there was some maybe a tax incentive incentive for him to do that, not just a creative incentive. But on the creative incentive, there's lots of creative incentive for people to come to Philadelphia. It was shocking to see the slide that uh, Mr. Ivory presented, to see that we don't even rank in the top 20 searches. And you see cities like Asheville, North Carolina, which my grandparents are from Asheville. I've been, been to Asheville, a cool city, but it's not a music town. It's not Philadelphia. To echo uh, the previous presenter's point, Mr. Hines, the, um, the, the, uh, the number of people in bands who are from Philadelphia in everybody's touring act, it's, a, it's astonishing. If you look at all the pop acts that are out there and you look at who's in their band, it, they're loaded with Philadelphia musicians. Philadelphia has an incredible music uh, history and an incredible music present. And to think of how, um, you know, to learn through this committee and through the work that you were all doing here, uh, thank you, Councilman O, the, uh, to learn about the tax dollars that are, that are picked up. I mean, we pay them. We pay uh, ticket tax. So every ticket that's, that's bought at our clubs, we pay a tax on it, a 5% entertainment tax that goes right back to the city. To think about the power that that could hold to drive and to nurture this kind of very fragile economy of the music business in Philadelphia. Um, is really uh, exciting to think that that we could actually take some of those dollars and use them for uh, for the, the the very community which they come from, and it only seems appropriate too. Um, so thanks everybody for being here again. I'm Tommy Joyner. 
Thank you very much, Tommy. Uh, next, um, I'll ask uh, Theo Aronson to identify himself, state your name, and then provide us with your testimony, I believe, on recommendation number three. Good morning. My name is Theo Aronson, and I've been working in the music industry for 15 years now, both as a record producer and marketing executive at record labels. I'm testifying to ask this committee today to adopt the music industry task force's recommendations. And today I'd like to speak to you specifically about promoting Philadelphia's diverse music culture in our local transportation hubs. Please imagine for a moment getting off a train at 30th Street Station, coming up the escalator, and hearing a city-sponsored gospel choir or vocal ensemble reverberating in one of the most iconic train stations in the world. Or walking off a plane into an arrivals terminal and being greeted by a local jazz trio or singer-songwriter performing live in the airport. These are two simple examples that could be implemented and immediately begin showcasing to the world that Philadelphia is the original music city. Seeing music in these types of transportation hubs is also something I've experienced in both my business and personal travels to other cities, whether flying to Nashville for a recording session or to Austin, Texas for the South by Southwest Music Conference, Los Angeles for the Grammys, Chicago for Lollapalooza Music Festival, or to London for the Great Escape Music Conference. It is always immediately clear when you're walking into the, off the airplane that you are in a music town. Cities like Seattle have even taken it a step further by having a local record label, Sub Pop Records, open a major retail location within their airport. Philadelphia has arguably more significant music history than many of these cities that we're going to be talking about today, which is reason to provide a similar experience for visitors when they arrive in Philadelphia. The production and programming of live performances in these transportation hubs also present an opportunity for strategic partnerships with Philadelphia's incredible performing arts schools and universities, allowing institutions like Curtis, Temple, Drexel, University of the Arts to present their students to the public in these settings both promotes Philly's musical diversity and also its world-class educational offerings. There are dozens of other programs like these that could be implemented to not only stimulate and grow the current music economy, but to also stimulate Philadelphia's tourism economy. And these are all examples of things that a newly established music office could oversee and manage. I'd like to wrap up with one other comment as I set up for my friend and the next witness, Max Ochester, to speak about the redevelopment of Sigma Sound Studios. This particular building is one of the last physical remaining pieces of Philly's music history. It was recently in danger of being demolished by a developer to make an apartment building, but thanks to the Historical Commission and the Preservation Alliance, it was successfully historically designated to prevent its demise. We recommend that Sigma be redeveloped into a multicultural music office headquarters that will include a reproduction of the original Sigma Sound recording studio, offices for the new music office, a concert venue, and a gallery space with rotating exhibits. Sigma is worthy of being on the recommendations list because it is an important part of not only Philadelphia's music history, but Philly's black music history, which needs to be preserved and promoted. If redeveloped properly, it could give Philly's music community a home base to develop more initiatives to stimulate the creative economy. Having the city's support to operate a new facility like this would speak volumes about the city's commitment to its musical roots and the existing music community. A space like this could provide meaningful educational and cultural programming for the surrounding neighborhoods and schools with potential to generate significant tax revenue for the city. Thank you again for your consideration of the Music Industry Tax Force's recommendations. I yield my time. Thank you very much, Theo. Um, before we go to the next panel, I just want to note that we had a witness, Shane Shapiro, Ph.D., founder, executive chairman of Sound Diplomacy, who was going to testify on recommendation one. Unfortunately, because of the delays and the fact that he was uh, or is in London and was testifying out of London, he could not uh, remain on the call. But I will ask um, the chair, David Ivory, if he could just comment briefly on recommendation one before we go to the next panel. Well, what we saw in the task force overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, was the to establish a music office we just took the model from the philadelphia film office saw what the, what the impact it had on the development of entertainment of films in this in the city and it, it just seems like a very natural uh natural progression see what what's going on here is that you have the, the, a great spot like the cleft club you have uh 
other organizations like the Grammys in the city, PMA, all these different organizations but there's no one collective spot you even have the philadelphia folk song society there's a, a lot of these great great organizations the thing is that having an independent music office could really help foster all of the culmination of all these and have a spot where tourists can come where do i want to see music what do i want to contact or where people want to record in studios what studio would be the best so but there's no real centralized place where people from out of town or even in town for that matter can go so we thought that that was an overwhelming um first step to get this uh, office together i hope that explains a little better and shane was going to provide some anecdotal evidence some actual numbers that he's done this on other cities in other parts of the country and the world to show the impact that uh, offices like this have. But of course, he's, he's in London and he had to go. So that's unfortunate. Thank you very much, David. Um, but that testimony and that recommendation is very important. And I think it feeds into the rest of the panel. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Clerk, would you please call the next panel? Our next panel is Max O'Truster. Marcus Bryant, and Jesse Lundy. And in that order, I'll ask panel three to um, state your name and provide us with your testimony, beginning with Max. Thank you very much. Hello, City Council. How are you? I'm Max Ochester, and I own Brewery Town Beats Record Shop in North Philadelphia. My connection to Sigma Sound Studios began in 2018 when I was attending a meeting around the corner from Philadelphia's other famous studio, 309 South Broad Street, the Philadelphia International Records Building and Cameo Parkway Studios. The construction had just begun on what there is today, which is a high rise. I began thinking about the other studios of, in Philadelphia from that same era, and Sigma Sound was immediately at the top of my list, so I set off to find out what happened to the 212 North 12th Street building. I walked from Broad and Pine to 12th and Race and found that the Sigma building was still standing in relatively good shape, although it looked abandoned. I spent my ride back to my shop thinking about what to do and who to call uh, to find out more information on Sigma. And I have known a little bit about historic preservation and heard of the Preservation Alliance of Philadelphia. So that's where I decided to go first. The initial phone call seemed to be the right one because in November 13th, 2020, the Sigma Sound Studios building won a spot on the Philadelphia Register of Historic Places, protecting the beloved cultural landmark from demolition. I want to speak briefly on the history of the Sigma building, its importance as the birthplace of the Philly Sound and our collective vision for the building in the future. Back in 1963, the Beatles' first US single, She Loves You, it was re released in 1963 in only a thousand, an edition of a thousand, and then re-released in 1964, and it went to number one on the Billboard charts here in America. The single was mastered in that 212 North 12th Street building, under a um, studio called Reco Art, and it was released by a local label called Swan Records. In 1973, at the request of Don Cornelius, Sigma house band MFSB recorded the opening theme song to Soul Train, which had recently supplanted American Bandstand as the most popular dance show on national television. Though the show was based in New York, the theme was named TSOP, The Sound of Philadelphia, and became a number one hit and is now credited as one of the harbingers of the disco era. Then in 1974, British superstar David Bowie chose Philadelphia and Sigma Studios to record his Young Americans album, which was heavily influenced by American soul music and the Philly sound. At a special invite from Bowie's guitar player, Carlos Alomar, a young and then unknown singer named Luther Vandross traveled to Philadelphia and ended up singing background vocals and subsequently launching his career in music. David Ivory and Ivory Productions rented the space in the Sigma building all throughout the 1990s, engineering and recording the Roots' four, first four records from Do You Want More to the Grammy-winning Things Fall Apart. Just as soul music in the 1960s was synonymous with Motown Records in Detroit, Stack Re Stacks Records in Memphis, and Muscle Shoals Sound of Fame Studios, Philadelphia in the 1970s became the undisputed center of soul music Pantheon, with Sigma Studios as its primary center of production. 
The Philly sound or the sound of Philadelphia to me means lush and complex string arrangements, deep grooves and beautiful songwriting. When I sit back and think about how much this music has influenced the world we live in today, it becomes clear to me how important this building and its legacy is and why it should be preserved. Without Sigma Sound Studios or MFSB, which stands for mother, father, sister, and brother, dance music and popular music wouldn't exist in the way that we know it today. The disco beat commonly known as the four on the floor was a mainstay of Trump's drummer Earl Young throughout the early 70s. A recording error 1975 session for the song Bad Luck by Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, where Earl Young's hi-hat was too loud in the recording, is said to have established the loud hi-hats in disco. Without disco, you wouldn't have house music, hip-hop music, or pop music. But that makes a great point. Even the mistakes made at Sigma went on to shape the world we know today. The collective vision for the Sigma building and the 212 North Street building is one of a creative, culturally diverse hub for all things Philadelphia music. Although it is not large enough to accommodate a full-blown music dedicated or museum dedicated to the history of Philadelphia music, we do see a rotating exhibit space highlighting different aspects of our rich musical heritage. We also imagine the space being used for performances and events with a nod back to the Sigma heyday when WMMR used to throw live on-air performances in the building. One of those original performances was by a young and relatively unknown piano player named Billy Joel. We see the 212 North 12th Street building continuing that legacy and once again becoming a space to nurture and support musicians and artists looking to get their start. Something I didn't mention earlier, but I'd like to add to my definition of the Philly sound is how sonically important that Studio A room was at Sigma. That room made the sound, the shape of the room, the echo chamber, the reverb, all created the Philly sound known and loved worldwide. We would like to recreate that room fully functional with the original studio gear so that space can once again be used for recording, as well as teaching and documenting the history of Philadelphia music. Lastly, I fully report all the recommendations presented here today by the Music Industry Task Force, but specifically recommendation number one, we are well aware that City Council and the hearing in, in this hearing in particular is not about funding our vision. However, creating a Philadelphia music office that's purpose is to facilitate and support groups like ours, we see as an essential part of moving forward as well as saving our past. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. At this time, I'll ask Marcus Bryant to uh, state his name and then uh, identify himself and provide us with his testimony. Thank you. Greetings, Councilman O, Chairman Ivory, members of council, committee members, colleagues, and fellow Philadelphians. Thank you for this opportunity. I am Marcus Bryant, aka Rated Art, CEO of Loud Series. I am a singer songwriter producer who works with John Legend, her, Diddy, Ludacris, and many others. I currently serve as secretary for the Philadelphia chapter of the Recording Academy. I am an educator and an advocate for creative arts, especially in Philadelphia, who spent years in the executive office of Settlement Music School. The Philadelphia Music Industry Task Force is making important recommendations that I support, and there are a few I would like to speak to. The first is market the strengths of Philadelphia's rich music history and the current boom of music venues and artists. Philly is internationally recognized for its role as the birthplace of America. The landmarks and museums tell the tale of the road to independence and the building of a nation. Residents and tourists alike flock to the Liberty Bell and wait in line to take a picture with the Rocky statue at the foot of the equally famous steps of the Philadelphia Museum of Art. The city's rich musical history, while celebrated, does not hold the same regard, even though, like the United States, many of music's roots grew out of Philadelphia's foundation. The music creativity of Philadelphia's musicians and artists have given the world is immeasurable. Industry pioneers like Gamble and Huff, who created the sound of Philadelphia, American Bandstand, the Philadelphia Orchestra, and Marian Anderson, should be as synonymous with Philadelphia as a cheesesteak and our sports fans are. Uh, with the recent surge of Philly born and raised artists receiving accolades, Jasmine Sullivan's Grammy wins, Questlove's Oscar and Grammy, 
and a number of new venues. Every musical act should stop here on their tour and festivals should consider us for their home base. I believe it's imperative to continue to lift and promote just how unique our city's creative influence music is uh, and what it will mean to the world for generations to come. I believe it should be as prominent as Independence Hall. Remembering our history and focusing on the future of music will keep the impact of Philly competitive with other mu major music hubs in the US. Secondly, the redevelopment of Sigma Sound Studios. Concerning the redevelopment of Sigma Sound, I have a special connection to Sigma. It was one of the first major studios I recorded at. Mike and Joe Tarja, may they rest in peace, would allow me to come in after hours and work on music at no cost. Moments like this coupled with their generosity and support helped build confidence in myself as a writer, producer, and artist in the game, propelling me to eventually perform and work with major artists locally and across the world. It was affirming recording in the same studio that Kenny Gamble, Leon Huff, Michael Jackson, Aretha Franklin, and many others frequented. As heartbreaking as it was to see Sigma Sound Studios go, I am in full support of its resurrection. I believe it will serve as a symbol of inspiration to music lovers and creators. Lastly, to develop an awareness campaign for the fair compensation for working musicians. Some venues at times pay artists and bands a low flat rate, but profit multiple times that in cover charges, tickets, alcohol, and food sales. This is an unfair pr uh, practice, especially since the main draw of the event is the music. Uh, awareness campaigns will challenge and encourage the city's establishment to support our musicians so that we can survive while providing high level entertainment lending to the morale of our city. Recently, there have been steps in the right direction, but there is still room for more improvement. Um, music is ingrained in almost every aspect of our lives and being able to enjoy our favorite artists live is something many look forward to. I know from experience that the amount of time, effort, resources artists need just to prepare for the performances outweighs the compensation. Music is essential and change is paramount. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Um, our next witness is Jesse Lundy. Please state your name, identify yourself, and provide us with your testimony. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Jesse Lundy. I've been a concert promoter in Philadelphia for 27 years now. Uh, I've seen the coming and going of a lot of venues. Um, I want to first say very quickly that one of the first opportunities I had in Philadelphia was to record in the big room at Sigma. Uh, when you talk to people in other cities about music in Philadelphia, it's certainly at the top of most people's lists. The amount of money that other cities like Memphis have spent restoring uh, the Stax uh, studio and museum, we don't have to spend that money. We have the building. The building has not been leveled, and it's a very important part. Uh, I hope you'll consider that action. Um, primarily, I'm here to talk today about uh, parking in various venues. Um, we got very far down the road with this prior to the pandemic, and I believe that had the pandemic not happened, we would probably be taking action on this. Um, I'll speak primarily uh, about the Milk Boy, uh, sorry, about Milk Boy on Chestnut Street, which does not at this time have a proper loading zone at all. Uh, across the street is the hospital. On the other corner is parking for scooters, which I use and appreciate, but you can't unload there. Um, and the other corner, which is currently being renovated, the opportunity, I imagine, is there to put a cutout that at certain hours would be able to be able to be able to be used for loading in and out safely. Um, I've spoken to a lot of different venues in town. Uh, before I was part of the Music Industry Task Force, a questionnaire was sent out to venues to see what it was that their needs were with this. And it's a major consideration. Uh, like the last gentleman said, artists are not making tons of money playing any of these rooms, I'm sure. And to walk outside and find yourself having been towed or a parking ticket really can put a damper on an, on an evening. I'm also a musician and I have done the park run your gigantic amplifier and all your guitars in and try to make it back before the parking authority gets there. And it's a challenge. So it's a consideration 
even if it's just during certain hours or done with a placard or something like that, uh, to have that consideration for musicians makes a huge difference. Uh, like Tommy Joyner said earlier, there's a lot of money moving through this town in the live concert sector. And it's a big consideration that I know that the musicians would appreciate. The last thing I want to say really quickly uh, is to go back to the idea of music playing when people step off of an airplane or off of a train. That was another one that we got really far down the road with, certainly with the airport prior to the pandemic. And I think it sets a certain tone for visitors to come in and hear Philadelphia music. We have a lot of really big bands in this town and have had since the beginning of time. So it wouldn't be hard to put together a playlist, which I believe Chill Moody had even offered to put together on behalf of us. Those three things are worth consideration. I appreciate your time, and I yield my time. Thank you very much. Um, I'll ask um, if any of our uh, council members, committee members, have questions for any of the panels we heard from, um, the panel two, panel three, before we go to um, panel four. There being none, we will go to panel four. Clerk, would you please call the next panel? I believe um, Council Member Harity has a question. Hey, Council Member Harity? You're muted, Council Member. There you All right, there we go. Uh, all right. It's more, it's more of just a comment. Uh, I really just want to thank all of you for your testimony and. Uh, you know, I, I grew up working in the restaurant business on South Street. I mean, I frequent Dobbs and many other, the Trocadero for years. Uh, really glad to see Sigma. I mean, it is uh, this, the historical value uh, of preserving it is, is, is very good. And I'm glad that uh, people are actually fighting to save our heritage here in Philadelphia. So thank you. Thank you very much, Council Member. Uh, with that, Clerk, would you call um, uh, panel four? Bernard M. Resnick, Jack McCarthy, and Carrie Park. Okay. I will note that we have written testimony from Dr. Lewis Anthony DeLise, but I believe I see him um, on on the on the on the call. Is is uh, Dr. DeLise with us? Okay. Um, what I'll do then is this. In the order, Hi. Paul. Oh, you are here. Yeah, so, I am so, indeed here. Okay. So we will have you on panel four. So what I'm going to do, if you're prepared, if not, we have your written testimony. But what I will do is I will call in the order of uh, Bernie Resnick, um, Jack McCarthy, Harry Park, and then um, Louis uh, Anthony DeLise. Um, and so, uh, Bernie, would you provide us with your name, identify yourself, and begin with your testimony? Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman. My name is Bernie Resnick. I'm a musician that went to law school. As you can see behind me, my instruments are behind me. And interestingly enough, I'd like to build on what uh, Mr. Lundy said a moment ago before I have my prepared remarks, which is that uh, I was invited to play a jazz show tomorrow evening, which I accepted. But the first question I asked when I was invited was not how much am I being paid? It was where can I park my car to unload that gigantic instrument without having to get a parking ticket or drag it three blocks down the road? Uh, and so it is a very, very important item. And probably as we called it in the uh, task force meetings, uh, low hanging fruit, something that won't hurt anybody, but can help a lot of people. And I think something that's very easy to do. Basically, I'm an entertainment lawyer and a musician. I've practiced in this area of the law for 35 years. Um, my wife, Sally Madison, and I run an entertainment law firm here in Philadelphia. Uh, I'm also an adjunct professor of law at Villanova Law School, uh, where Sally and I teach the course in entertainment law. And I serve on multiple task forces and boards of, boards of directors of various arts organizations. I've also been honored with being elected to be a member of the Music Industry Task Force. Uh, the rest of my background, I'll yield. Uh, you can prepare written testimony, and I think it's better that uh, we listen to the other panelists rather than have me talk about what I've accomplished in the past. I'm testifying today to encourage the City Council Committee on the Global Opportunities and the Creative Innovative Economy to adopt 
this music industry task force report and recommendations. We worked very hard for a long time to put this together. And uh, Mr. Delise, Mr. Ivory and I were among the authors of this document. The relevant recommendation that I feel is the main reason that city council should adopt our recommendations is our recommendation to quote, identify sources of funding for sustained dedicated efforts to grow Philadelphia's music economy. For those people that don't have a copy of the report, I've copied and pasted the full text of this recommendation as a written appendix to my oral testimony and I've submitted that already to council. Um, since I'm keen to hear what the other witnesses have to say today and to answer questions from council members, I'll refrain from reading that section aloud. But for remedies, there's no dispute that the plethora of arts organizations and cultural activities, which we normally see here in William Penn's green country town, as he called it, are a significant contributor to Philadelphia's tax base and the region's overall value as an attractive tourist destination for visitors and also the proud home to millions of souls. So in my opinion, in order to compete for the tourism dollars to retain local residents, the city of Philadelphia should take several steps as its guiding principles in connection with our recommendations. First, I think the council should invest in the cultural economy uh, by providing dedicated funding for arts and culture events, presenters, venues, creators, entertainers. A separate, fully funded, independent arts fund within the city budget, as well as dedicating a portion of financial assistance coming from the federal government to the creative community is an obvious, sensible investment in the city's future. Second, allocating a portion of the 5% amusement tax, where the city already collects on all for-profit ticket sales to fund the arts, especially since artistic events generate the amusement tax in the first place. Why should it go into the general fund when it's the music that's creating the payment of the tax? Shaving a little bit of that off to fund an office to help musicians, I think is an easy way to dedicate some of the money that the music industry earns to help that industry and to help the city in turn. Third, let's create a taxpayer funded, permanent, fully staffed arts and culture office charged with developing and implementing programming which will entertain the public, support the creators in the venues, and give the next generation of creators of all backgrounds an equal opportunity to enter the entertainment industry. This office could also serve as an ambassador, a cheerleader, and an advocate for the rich cultural heritage, which will continue to benefit the residents and the visitors of our fair city. Uh, in the spirit of supporting music and the arts in Philadelphia, and following up on my prior testimony on various occasions before this committee, I also encourage the city to fully restore funding for the Office of Arts, Culture, and the Creative Economy and the Philadelphia Cultural Fund in their upcoming budgets. Uh, you know, COVID-19 really was devastating to what all of us have had to endure in our industry. Finally, let me just take, uh, suggest we all take a moment to remember the late Philadelphia-born recording artist, Rakim Allen, who performed as P&B Rock. He was recently tragically murdered just a few short months ago while eating lunch with his domestic partner in Los Angeles. Today would have been Rakim's 31st birthday. Unfortunately, P&B Rock is not the only person or even the only recording artist whose life has been tragically cut short by gun violence. If city governments in Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Houston, Chicago, and many other places around the nation were able to stop the seemingly endless epidemic of homicides, I would gladly trade that for arts legislation any day of the week. I'm submitting written testimony as well, and I thank you for your time and consideration. I'm happy to hang around and answer any questions anyone may have. Thank you very much, Bernie. Um, next up, I'll ask Jack McCarthy, please uh, state your name, identify yourself, and provide us with your testimony. Thank you. Well, thank you, Councilman O. My name is Jack McCarthy, and I'm a longtime Philadelphia music historian and archivist. Uh, I've managed major archival projects for the Philadelphia Orchestra, which if you saw today's Philadelphia Inquirer, there's a big article about the orchestra donating its archives to the University of Pennsylvania. I was heavily involved in that project, but I've also managed major projects for the uh, Mann Music Center Historical and Archival Projects, the Philadelphia Jazz Legacy Project. I write and lecture, give walking tours, curate exhibits on Philadelphia music history, which I've been doing for over 40 years. So I'm, I have a real passion for this subject. I would like to 
point out a few aspects of Philadelphia's really rich music history that haven't been touched on uh, too much in today's testimony. One is that going back to the late 18th century, Philadelphia was the not just the political, but also the cultural capital of the young United States. All of the great musicians were here in Philadelphia. It was like the you know, equivalent of what New York or Los Angeles is today. We were the epicenter of music in America at that time. Uh, so we have this rich history going back hundreds of years. And um, some other aspects that haven't been pointed out, the Philadelphia Orchestra uh, from its founding in 1900 until the present has been acknowledged worldwide as one of the most innovative uh, artistically virtuoso ensembles, you know, in, in the whole world and uh, responsible for a number of groundbreaking innovations over the course of history with Leopold Stokowski and Eugene Normandy as uh, conductors and uh, the current conductor, Yannick Nazay Sagan is continuing that tradition. Uh, Philadelphia jazz uh, musicians such as John Coltrane, Dizzy Gillespie, uh, McCoy Tyner, and a host of others literally transformed the direction of jazz uh, in the in the 50s and 60s, all based in here in here in Philadelphia. Others have testified about um, you know Philadelphia International Records and its importance. Uh, American Bandstand was based here in the late 50s and early 60s. That was the single most influential and popular program for popular music in in America. So the whole. Uh, popular music industry, its epicenter really was Philadelphia, both in the late 50s and early 60s, and then again in the 70s with Philadelphia International Records and all of their artists. So we have a musical history that is unparalleled. Uh, and, you know, th there was this testimony about these other cities uh, promoting themselves as music centers. We have the bare bones of the history. It just has not been properly uh, promoted in an organized sort of comprehensive way. Uh, I, as a music historian, I make a point of visiting all the great music cities in America, Nashville, Memphis, New Orleans. They have these whole ecosystems of museums and tours and historic sites and activities you can do. Uh, so they have these very uh, vibrant live current music scenes, but it's also based on this rich history that they exploit. We have the bare bones of all of that. We just have not uh, promoted it effectively in an organized, comprehensive, sort of collaborative way. So Philadelphia has all the ingredients to be one of the great music cities in the world. It is one. It just hasn't been properly exploited. So, uh, you know, I high, highly endorse all of the recommendations of this report, just knowing this phenomenal history that is not really being properly promoted. Um, the last thing I want to say is in my research, I have discovered something interesting. Philadelphia had a Municipal Bureau of Music from 1929 to 1932. Mayor Mackey uh, created this bureau in late 1928. It, it took office in 1929. It did amazing things. Uh, but then with the Great Depression of 1932, it, it, you know, there was just massive cutting of city services. So it sort of, uh, you know, fell under the axe. But um, for three years, we had a Municipal Bureau of Music. They did amazing things. They brought music to neighborhoods. They uh, distributed music. Uh, they uh, sponsored concerts. They had a municipal music car, which went around to different neighborhoods. They had records to play, and they held dances and parties. And uh, their really crowning achievement uh, is the uh, Robin Hood Dell. They were the organization that really took up the banner to create an outdoor music venue for the Philadelphia Orchestra, which became became the Robin Hood Dell, which later morphed into the Man Music Center. So there's precedent. A hundred years ago, we had a Philadelphia music office. Uh, we have the phenomenal history. We have all the infrastructure. We just need a coordinating agency to sort of put it all together in an effective way. So I highly recommend the, uh, all of the, oh, there's the municipal music car. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so um, I heartily endorse all of these uh, recommendations, and I hope to see my great city that whose music is such a passionate issue for me uh, really being properly promoted throughout the world. Thank you. Thanks.
thank you very much. And and quite frankly, I just learned something. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do is our our last witness is actually Kerry Park. Um, I know that I uh, called on Dr. Um, Delise, but he has submitted written testimony. If you'd like to make a comment, if not, it's perfectly fine. But I will ask, because Ron Ash is not available, if the chair, David Ivory, chair of the Music Task Force, would just summarize for us after Kerry Park's testimony, recommendations eight and nine. Uh, with that, I'll ask Kerry uh, Park to please state your name, identify yourself, and provide us with your testimony. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning. Uh, my name is Carrie Park, and I am the general manager of World Cafe Live, which is an independent live music and community venue that's been operating out of West Philly since 2004. I'm also a member of the city's arts and culture task force, and as well as the current regional chapter leader of NEVA, the National Independent Venue Association, that was formed in April of 2020 at the onset of the pandemic to represent independent venues and promoters across the country to ensure their viability. I want to say a quick thank you to the council members on the Global Opportunities and Creative Innovative Economy Committee and their hardworking staff. We really appreciate your commitment to our city and your time here this morning. Thank you also to the wildly talented and committed peers of mine contributing on and off screen today. Um, I agree, council member O. I've also <laughs> can't believe how much I've learned today just in this testimony. Um, Surely you understand by now from all this information shared thus far, the prioritization and strategy resource of resources around the music industry in Philadelphia is at a critical point of importance. To echo the sentiment from Theo Anderson stated earlier, Philadelphia is the original music city, but only we know it. And we are years behind other cities who have chosen to put the time, effort, and funds into supporting and promoting their larger music, their larger music economy. As prior testimony has identified, we have a robust musical past, present, and most importantly, future that must be fortified now to preserve what has been, support all of the incredible work happening right now, and also pave the road for what's next and on the horizon for the next generation. What these recommendations presented today also highlight is that resources placed around music city priorities have a multiplied impact that truly benefits all Philadelphians. With my work at the National Independent Venue Association, we were able to gather mass support to pass the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant Program that provided, provided $16.5 billion in federal funding to pull the independent live music community through the worst of the pandemic. 137 million of those dollars came directly to Philadelphia organizations to help them reopen. Through that effort, we learned three very important key takeaways that I urge City Council to keep in mind as you consider what's next for Philadelphia. First and foremost, a thriving music and particularly live music scene defines why people want to live, work, and travel to a city. Independent venues and promoters are not just cultural necessities. We are also fierce economic drivers with an estimated 12 times multiplier back into the general economy for every dollar spent within live music businesses. Second, breaking down the walls between nonprofit and for-profit entities when it comes to coalition building and providing support is absolutely essential to success. Both sides need support and must work together to shared goals. We're doing the same thing, we just do it in different ways and we have to work together. And honestly, to put it simply, shared music experiences stay with you no matter your background. The impact of those moments cross every single line that would otherwise divide us. Whether you live for music and everything that you do, or you just support small business development and honestly anything in between, investment for the music industry is ultimately investment in people. And at this point, it's support for the very soul of Philadelphia. Creative economies do not get created overnight, and we can deliberately decide to invest and expand on our incredible foundation with these recommendations from the Music Industry Task Force and beyond, or honestly will fall farther behind and eventually face collapse of everything that has been built thus far. Prioritizing arts and culture and the people that make those possible in our funding as a city will have a positive impact for generations. Music isn't what we do, it's who we are, and it's honestly beyond time to tell the world. Thank you, and I appreciate the time today. Thank you very much. At this time, I'll ask uh, the chair, David Ivory, uh, to provide us commentary on uh, recommendations eight and nine. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, 
again, what we were talking about earlier, some low-hanging fruit that I think would be very easy to accomplish. We wanted to, number eight was to create hubs for music and concert promotion material. What happens currently is everybody puts posters on built on uh, telephone poles, light posts on the side of buildings. It's trashy. They fall down, creates litter. One of our ideas was to create kiosks in certain areas where there's vent music venues, like say in Northern Liberties or uh, uh, in, on uh, the campus of Drexel, where we can have <clears throat> kiosks that, dem that, that show and promote these individual shows, just like posters, but actually in digital formats where it can be uploaded. And again, maybe the music office could handle this or what have you, but a way that we can eliminate litter, but yet have centralized places like, hey, what's happening tonight? Well, that kiosk down there has pretty much everything that's going on in the city. And I think it would be a great way to help foster that. And number nine, again, another low-hanging fruit, we feel, is to encourage music performance venues to cater to all ages. Now, I know there's insurance issues that, that deal with this, but if there's ways that we could create certain sh shows for younger people under 21, we feel that that would be a really great way to get the next generation into the venues, the next generation hearing new music, and those kind of things. And I think that happens a lot in cities um, other than ours, and I'm would hope we could do more of that so that's basically eight and nine as far as a little bit of detail for you thank you very much uh david ivory um and uh i do have the testimony of uh dr lewis anthony delise um dr delise would you like to make any comments or are you going to rest on your written testimony uh, I will rest on my written testimony, except to add that uh, I would certainly endorse the adoption of, of the uh, recommendations of the task force. Uh, Philadelphia is undoubtedly at the center of uh, music activity in the United States and has been for many, many years, going back hundreds of years, as, as my colleagues have, uh, have, have testified. Uh, we have a, a gem. We have a shining light in the music industry that we hide under a bushel we need to let that light shine and let the rest of the world know who we are in doing so it will not only benefit we who make music our lives not our livelihood livelihoods but our lives we will benefit the entirety of the united states and specifically philadelphia Thank you very much, Councilman O, for your your support of uh, of our art. Thank you very much. Um, I believe that uh, this concludes our panels. I will ask the members of uh, the committee if they have any questions for any of the the uh, panelists who have testified. I I believe there are none. Um, from what I can tell, and I'll ask the clerk if there are any questions to let me know. Um, at this point, uh, I believe there is no one who has signed up for public testimony. Am I correct, uh, clerk? Correct, yes. All right, thank you very much. Um, there being no further uh, witnesses and no one from the public who would like to make comment, uh, um, I want to thank all the panels and witnesses for their participation today. We value your opinions. I value your uh, expert testimony and your hard work. I now invite all panels and witnesses uh, to disconnect um, after I close um, from the meeting before we go into a public meeting, uh, because at the public meeting we'll be voting to adopt uh, this report and its recommendations. I, I do want to make a, a brief statement. About seven or eight years ago, I went to Korea at my own expense. Um, I, one of the things I did is I met with um, the creative industry people there. It was not hard. I just had to write a letter. I'm Councilman David O from Philadelphia, and I'd like to meet you. And lo and behold, they said, we're happy to meet you. And I went to meet the film people and the K-pop people, they were not as big as they are today. With the idea that we would establish a collaboration between Philadelphia songwriters and producers with what was then something emerging called K-pop. Um, 
And I learned at the time how K-pop was tied into K-drama and K-television and every K-thing that they were doing. I, I really bring that up because I first visited Korea, I think, in 1986. It's a very, very different country economically, um, you know, not really developed. Uh, and I've seen the transformation over a period of time. But but one of the things they were not, they were not a film industry or a music industry. They, there was no real, other than Korean traditional music, and basically they didn't really follow the copyright laws and things like that. Um. A little country like Korea, far off the 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 the, 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 the travel path of uh, where you expected um, the world's music to come from, is now a music giant. Um, and, and that story, you know, certainly all of everyone on this uh, a call does know that, but the public does not. What I would say is, they're smart enough to understand where their economy is going to be built how they will gauge engage in the global economy and what they don't have what they don't have is oil they don't have minerals they don't have natural resources they don't have wood what they have is a lot of intelligent creative people who who are interested in getting into the creative arts economy among other things they invested in the the human beings that make up their population something we should be doing it is something we 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 have a, a giant head start on we have all the resources and abilities if we don't do that it, it is just a horrendous thing for us not to do not just for the economy and and the jobs and all that which is so important but just the people who who are um not going to be able to have a sense of hopefulness about being the kind of person they want to be, at least not in this city. They would have to travel someplace else. It, it is something that I think we should not be struggling with as a city. We should invest. Um, and I hope that is something that this report and the creation of a permanent music office and, and the centralization of expertise outside of politics adjust the music and the music professionals leading the way in in all the areas of the arts as well will be so impactful for us so with that i'll say that this concludes the uh, public hearing of the committee we will now go into a public meeting to consider the action to be taken on the bill before this committee today thank you very much thank you councilman oh we appreciate it thank you all the councilmen and councilwomen thank you very much Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'll ask the clerk, will you please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are in attendance will please indicate that you are present when your name is called. Also, please say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on screen when you speak. Chairperson O. Present. Vice Chairperson Bass. Good afternoon. I am present. Council Member Squilla. I am present. Council Member Gilmore Richardson. Council Member Thomas. Council Member Lozada. Council Member Harity. Present. And Council Member Driscoll. Good afternoon, present. We have a quorum as we did um, at the beginning of the hearing. Uh, at this time, uh, quorum being present, um, the chair recognizes Council Member Bass for a motion on the final report and recommendations of the Philadelphia Music Industry Task Force. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Moment, please. I move that the final report and recommendation of the Philadelphia Music Industry Task Force be adopted and issued by this committee to the council. Can I have a second? Second. 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 Thank you. 
It has been moved and properly seconded that the final report and recommendations of the Philadelphia Music Industry Task Force be adopted and be issued by this committee to the council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it, and the motion carries. The report will be issued by this committee to the council. At that time, the whole council will vote on adopting this uh, recommendation. Um, it's a long time in coming. I think seven years since we started this and years after. Um, I thank you all for your expertise, for, for being um, involved in this uh, um, throughout the years, and uh, I hope this uh, marks a very important uh, milestone in the development of music and the creative arts e economy here in Philadelphia. This concludes the business before this committee on global opportunities, creative and innovative economy. Today, thank you all very much for your attendance. Have a, have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good thank, job. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.